Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to January. No. It, it feels like January. It's damp. I've got wet knees. Don't ask. No, don't ask. It, it literally does feel like January. And it's the first week in September. What's going on? We're going to have snow by next week. We'll be able to snow drift up to us next. I know. That'll be fun, won't How it? is it the first week in September? It's the first week in... When you're watching this, it's the first week in September. Oh, right. It confuses it's me. It's still May or August or summer where we are at the moment. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Hello and welcome to just outside Daventry, which rhymes with lavatory, but it doesn't smell like a toilet. <laughs> it's actually quite nice, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It is. And although the, the, the never-ending farm truck is, is, is following it's us founders. again. Uh, never, never ending reverse in farm truck. You know the beep, beep, beep. It seems to follow us wherever we go. It does, and that's a bit weird. Today, I'm a bit like that bread, that 50-50. 50-50 bread. Cause like half of me is quite excited because we've got some good stuff today. We're taking narrowboat Silver Fox to the world's most famous motorway services. How is that going to happen? Don't ask. <laughs> and we're going through a type of lock that we've not been through before, which is also exciting. I mean, I am quite an adventurous person. He'll tell you that, and there's videos to prove it, aren't there? But then there's the other 50, which is a little bit nervous, isn't He's it? He's stressed to death. Can't you tell? I'm a little bit fidgety and stressy and, and babbling. Because we go into the Crick show, and today we're actually going to Crick, where we're going to moor up, hopefully in a quiet little corner. <laughs> it's not going to happen. In a cupboard where we can close the doors and shut the world. It's I'm good. really stressed about it because we're going to see thousands of people and I don't do well with ones of people. No. So my psychiatrist needs a psychiatrist. He does. <laughs> the amount of... <laughs> he phoned me, he says, can you help me, Sean? I says, no, you're on your own, mate. The workload I'm putting <laughs> on him. Just preparing for... And I'm telling you this after the event so that you're not panicking if you go into the show or you've been to the show, you're not panicking thinking, oh, I hope he's not too stressed. He will be fine. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we are just outside Daventry on the Grand Union Canal. We came up from Braunston the other day and today we're going to carry on along the Grand Union Canal and we are going to turn to port we are or in my case gin <laughs> and vodka and vodka we're going to turn to port and go on to a new section of canal for us that we've never done uh, which is the leicester section also known as the leicester line of the grand union canal uh, that's going to take us up close to uh, a motorway a railway an old roman road some motorway services and then up some locks through a tunnel and then into Crick Wharf, where we're going to moor for a few days. A few days? A week. He's going to walk Otis. I am. While I get us up towards the junction. Up the junction, that were a song by Squeeze, wasn't it? It was. What was the other one that I liked? Uh, cool for Cats. That weren't Squeeze. Were it not? I don't know. Who sang Cool for Cats? I'm sure it was Squeeze. I can't there remember. were another one that Squeeze did and I really liked. Hourglass. Oh. I liked that one as well. Uh, right, we'll see you there. It's bizarre. So why am I dreading Crick so much? Well, one of the traits of my ASD is that I'm really not good socially. I'm all right talking to a camera or on the radio, but when it's person to person, I find it really difficult because when I'm talking to camera, I know what I'm saying. Everything's pre-planned and pre-thought in my head. But when it's to another person, they're saying things that I'm not expecting. And you know when you're watching something on the internet or on Netflix and you get the little buffering circle that just keeps going round, it's trying to process. That's my head. So if somebody says something to me, I can hear you, but I don't necessarily understand it straight away. My brain takes time to process what's been said to me. And that's what the little buffering circle is. And that's why I find conversation really uncomfortable because I can't answer back straight away with an appropriate answer what I think might be an appropriate answer you know that thing where you go home from work and somebody said something to you and you think in your head oh I should have said that that's I'm like that all the time and it's not just that it's things like body language I don't understand body language and facial expressions and the tone it's like when you read in a text message sometimes you can 
misunderstand what's been said in the text message because it's text and not the spoken word. Well, if you translate that to the spoken word, that's the kind of difficulty I have. And it doesn't matter whether it's one person or 10 people or 100 people, it's the same thing. So going to a show where a lot of people are gonna be talking to me over a couple of days and I know how exhausting it's gonna be and I just try and put this brave, confident face on and try and be normal. But what's normal? These are the visitor moorings as we approach Norton Junction, which is just ahead of us, and we've got to make a very sharp turn to port. We oh, have Cherry Coke. Uh, this Norton Junction, not to be confused with Norton Junction, which is a railway goods yard in Staffordshire, or King's Norton Junction, which is where the Worcester and Birmingham, Birmingham Canal, it's all that gin, <laughs> meets the Stratford-upon-Avon Canal. This one will take us onto the Leicester line and it's called Norton Junction, named after Graham. <laughs> oh, it's not. They started work on this stretch of the canal from the junction of the Grand Union back there up to Crick in the early 1800s. And they signed a contract with the brickmakers in Crick to provide two million bricks. Two million bricks? Wow. At a cost of 32 shillings per thousand. That's about £1.60 for wow. a thousand bricks. That was a lot of money back then though. You could build a few boats with that, couldn't you? Boats? <laughs> Brick boat. And they, they signed up about 350 navvies to help dig the canal. And they got paid four pence per cubic yard of muck that they shifted. That's actually quite a lot. That is quite a lot. And it opened in 1814. The first mile or so of the Leicester Line from Norton Junction is really peaceful and tree-lined and full of Bickerstaff boats. <laughs> Kev will love that, won't he? He will. <laughs> but we're just coming up to the next bridge and it carries quite a well-known street called Watling Street. Watling? Watling Street, have you heard of it? I think so. Yeah, we've covered it in other episodes because we've been under it and over it ah, quite a few yes, times. the Roman it's Road. It's the old Roman Road. And all this peace and tranquility and woodland and greenery is about to change as the old Roman road and the railway and the motorway and the canal are all going to try and squeeze through a 400 metre gap. Gap? They ought to name a motorway services after that. The did. <laughs> We're in the village of Watford. Not to be confused with Watford in London, which no. is about 60 miles behind us. This is a village of Watford. And we're approaching Watford Gap Motorway Services. It's just on our right hand side. But why is it called Watford Gap? Well, there's two hills either side of us. And there's a little 400 meter bit of level ground in between. And the Romans took advantage of it 2000 years ago, building Watling Street, which is now the A5. Then in the early 1800s, the canal appeared and ran side by side. Then in the 1830s, the railways came. And then in the 1950s, the M1 motorway. So all four now squeeze through this 400 meter gap between the two hills. Train! 
<laughs> Can you remember what Watford Gap Motorway Services used to be called when it first opened? I had no idea, I weren't even born. I bet there's I bet there's some of you that remember what Watford Gap Motorway Services was called when it first opened. Can we stop for some cherry coke? We can. Just coming up to Watford Locks, it's getting noisy. We've got the M1 on our starboard side and we've got the railway on our port side and then the A5. Uh, Watford Locks is seven locks in total. The first two are single locks. The next four are a staircase of narrow locks and then we've got a single narrow lock at the top. 16 meters it's gonna raise us, which is to the summit level, same level as the Foxton Locks, which is way ahead of us. Not gonna get there for a while. Now twice they talked about modernising these, back at the turn of the 20th century they were going to get rid of the locks and put an incline plane like they did at Foxton. That would have been good wouldn't it? It would. That would have been fun today. Uh, but the one at Foxton never really made any money, it was a bit of a flop. So they never built this one. And then when they turned all the Grand Union locks into double locks they were going to do the same here but that never got off the drawing board either. So 200 years over since they were first built, they still look like they did then. We're at the top of the first two locks and a boat's just come out and there's another one in the staircase which is what we're waiting for. Now I said earlier on that we've not done this type of lock before. We've done staircase locks but not narrow staircase locks and the paddle gear, the way the water moves is a little bit different on these than the normal staircase locks where water from the top just empties straight into the next lock down. Here it's a bit different. So we're going to go in the bottom lock first of all and you'll notice there's two types of paddle gear, one that's painted red and one that's painted white. And what we do is we go in the bottom lock, which is empty, we open the red paddle and that empties water from a side pond into the bottom lock. And then the white paddle next to it empties water from the next lock up back into the side pound. Well, why do they do that? Why do they use a side pound and not straight into the lock? Well, it actually saves about 50% of the water overall that a normal lock would where it just empties the whole lock into the next one down. Don't ask me why, even the lock keepers don't know why, but apparently it does save about half of the water. Now the side pounds will make more sense if I show you it from an aerial view where you can see the four locks in the staircase and the big side pounds at each side of it. Let's see how it all works in practice. The time it takes you to get from the bottom to the top, or vice versa, is all down to luck and how many boats are coming the other way. If you've got a clear run, you can do it in about 45 minutes. And if there's a few boats going in the same direction, they can usually get a boat out of the other end every eight minutes, which is pretty good. The volunteer lock keepers have got this system sorted. The thing is, if you arrive coming the other way and there's some boats coming up, You've got to wait a little while because it takes about 45 minutes to clear the lock system. So you might have to wait for the boats to come up or down, whichever, before you can go. But once you're going down, then it's about a 45 minute trip.
We always say it, but the volunteer lock keepers, proper stars. Uh, cheers to the lads at Watford Locks. There's just no so much and it's invaluable for, I mean, we've been boating on and off for 17 years and we've never seen that type of lock gear before. So we would have been a bit confused. And the writing on the sign is far too small for Sean, even with his glasses. There would have been mayhem, honestly. The whole of Watford Gap would have been three foot underwater by now. <laughs> it would. It's getting windy, time to put the kettle on. Tell you what I am impressed by what? so far on the Leicester section is, and you can always tell boaters conversations because they either talk about toilets or tell you where they were a nice long stretch of Armco. <laughs> Armco's brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? It is, isn't it? It's, but yeah, because you don't get unpinned by speeding boats. You don't get unpinned because you can pin with chains. And the best thing ever is when you get a bit of Armco, about 60 foot long. Just enough for one boat. One boat and all the other boats come by and they're all jealous. It's like, oh, yeah, the hiss at you. Nice mooring is that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Ken Dodd's Jam Butty Mines? I do. If you haven't heard of Jam Butty Mines, Google it. We're just coming up to Crick Tunnel, although there was a legend that there was a treacle mine in there. Well, I treacle. I'd have been in there in my kayak with my empty jam jars. Treacle. Treacle. Uh, <laughs> it's very leaky. And back in the day, even just after it was built, there's a lot of springs in the hill that leak into the tunnel. And the boatman used to leg the boats through the tunnel. And if there was no other boats, they'd stop, fill the kettle up from the spring that was leaking through the roof and make themselves a cuppa. Wow. And have a little rest in the middle of the tunnel. That's awesome. Isn't it awesome? Uh, so hence, it still is very leaky, even after all these years. Hence the so, raincoats. So the wet weather gear's on for the right reasons. Uh, and we've got the big light out. just under a mile long but it shouldn't have been that it should have been about half that to be honest but similar to Blissworth and Braunston tunnels when they were digging it they came across some dodgy quicksand so kept having to kind of reroute where they were going and in the end it ended up nearly twice as long as they wanted it to be Tell you what, it don't taste like treacle. It don't taste like treacle at all. It tastes like yeah, limestone. Yeah. <laughs> We had a new horn fitted recently. Uh, Kev from Bickerstaff came down and fitted this new horn. It's and awesome! It's awesome and Sean can't stop pressing the button and we've never actually pressed it in a tunnel before, have we? No! Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Which way are you going? <laughs> I like the rides where you get wet, <laughs> don't you? 
Except we don't have to buy them really cheap one pound plastic pack of Max to put on, do we? No, we don't. That you just throw away. How wasteful is that? Have you ever been on Valhalla at Blackpool Pleasure Beach? You have to get them one pound pack of Max. Yeah, that's the only ride that makes me scream. Well, the only like roller coaster ride that makes me scream anyway. It, do, it proper, It's where it stops and then goes backwards into the water and I, I proper scream like a nine year old girl. Don't it I? Does. It does. You always know when you see a costume change that something's occurred. There's and the screen goes black. <laughs> There's been a faff, yeah. When the screen fades to black and it says like however many days later, you know something happened. We got into the little wharf okay, but as you saw earlier on, I was fretting about the boat show. As he does. As I do, and I was letting it build up and we got more done. And I, I had to go have a lie down. I was getting a bit wound up when I... A bit. <laughs> he does. Uh, but the, the Crick Boat Show has now been and gone, mm. so this is like quite a few days later and it was actually alright, I survived it, let's put it that way. <laughs> Day one, I, I had a bit of a wobble in the first few hours, didn't I? Before we went in. Uh, but but uh, I did my little tricks and took my little potions and I were alright after that. But it was mental and I know mental. <laughs> Don't I? It was madness. We were expecting a few people to come and say hello. Yeah. But I mean, there's photos on social media of like crowds of like 14, 15, it's, 16 people stood around us taking photos. It was bizarre. It's just absolutely weird. Really weird. Uh, but we're in a really nice place. I mean, you can hear like just the breeze around the muff. It is really nice. This is Crick Wharf Marina. It used to be where the ABNB boat brokerage was based. Yeah. And you can see the boats just down over the hedge. Oh. Silver Fox in the middle of them all. And to our left side is where the old Airbnb office used to be and we're just outside there and it is lovely. And since the brokerage has moved to North Kilworth Marina, they've turned this into long-term moorings. And it's beautiful, there's lecky and water and Wi-Fi. So yeah. if you're after a long-term mooring on the Leicester line of the Grand Union. This uh, is lovely. It is lovely, I'll put the details in the video description. Yeah. So yeah, we went to the, the boat show, three days, and it was amazing. And Ooh. it was weird because it didn't feel like it's like two years since we've been, because of course they canceled last year because of the you know what. And it was weird, wasn't it? Because yeah. we saw the guys from Airbnb. Yeah. And we saw Lorraine and Nigel from Compost. And we saw Steve from Willow Wren. Ian Kinney from Swan Boats. Oh, your man crush. No, he's our man crush. You, I mean, you watch this bit of film and you can see that it's definitely Sean flirting with him. <laughs> <laughs> on the day bed on the back of Scarlet Lady. Isn't that a nice boat? Scarlet? And he's a married man with kids. Scar yeah, he's not. I mean, he's nice, but not nice like us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nice like with a wife and kids. As, as much as he wishes. Uh, but yeah, it's a lovely boat, wasn't it? Yeah, there beautiful. Was, there's quite a few boats there this year, and Ian's boat, uh, Scarlet Lady, beautiful inside. That bed, we're copying the bed for our new boat. Absolutely. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. And do uh, you remember Rob, who did the sign writing on Silver Fox? Rob Wag, yes. He did the sign writing for Scarlet Lady, and if you look, this, he's actually painted the little Scarlet Lady, and it's lovely. It reminds me of me dad. It Doesn't it look like me dad? When you look at the face, it looks like me dad when he's had a shave. Poor Scarlet Lady. Does. Better wig though, me dad, than, than Rob painted. <laughs> Rob obviously hadn't painted wigs a lot, has he? <laughs> uh, but <laughs> Ian had a couple of boats there, and there was uh, there was another one from Finesse. That was a very posh boat, wasn't it? <sighs> very expensive. It was very. The finish was like brilliant. Oh, yeah. Appar apparently, it took him 18 months to build. It's more like a project, isn't it? It was more like a futuristic boat. Everything. You touched everything, buttons, and it just went up and down and all. It did it. It did what? All sorts. <laughs> 300 grand. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's kind of the money. You get a house and a boat for that. <laughs> but there is a lot of work going into it. It was a very beautiful boat. And we've nicked a couple of ideas off that as well, yeah. haven't we, for our yes. boat? Uh, the boat that was voted best in show, it sounds like Crufts, doesn't it? It does. Uh, was from, it's a new company, isn't it? Uh, for what they're called, Diddums. <laughs> Didums. Didums. Oh no, Oak Furniture Warehouse. Oak, no. Oakums. Close. Oakums. Liam and Trevor from Oakums yeah. was there and they won the best boat. And it was lovely. Yeah. And it's about 130 grand, wasn't it? It weren't expensive. And what was it called? That's, uh, oh, 
off the, not, uh, oh, darling buds of May. Black Rise. I wonder if they've noticed that that coffee maker's gone yet. <laughs> Sean had it under his shirt, didn't you? On the way out. Uh, it was lovely to meet them, and uh, it was really exciting because they gave the keys uh, to the new owners, Karen and Andrew, as we were leaving. And they were like proper excited because after the show they just sailed they just off went. into the Grand Union Canal sunset and yeah. then there was a loud crash and we, we don't know what happened a after big that. Big puff of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think the real star of the show was definitely Otis. Oh. I have never heard so many people screaming Otis since the lifts broke at the Empire oh, State Building. Geez. <laughs> All over the place. And it's the first time he's been really properly socialised. Yeah since well since we got him because we couldn't socialize him properly because of lockdown so proud of him and he was so well behaved he was loving every minute of it he was asleep for like 13 hours after that one here <laughs> oh, yes. i don't know where he got the energy from <laughs> no idea we're wanting a nap and he's pulling on he's the still, lead he was still pulling away at six o'clock <laughs> when he was thinking slow down boy uh but it's been a really great show we went so i mean like literally thousands of people it's been an amazing experience thank you for putting up with me being a bit wobbly now and then but we got through it, and the next one's next May. I know, it's only nine months. It's going to be eight, isn't it? We've got to come back for that one. We definitely have. With the new boat. <sighs> Should we, we're not parking it out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, if, uh, if you can get tickets to next year and May, it's, it's well worth it. Whether you've got a boat or want a boat or not, the atmosphere is just amazing. I and think it's going to be a bonanza of a show next year. And you'll get to meet Otis. And Kinney from Suffer Swan And Boats. Kinney. Yeah. You'll You'll be from married Swan. this time next year, won't what, you? What, to Kinney? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm all right, so no comments about me, I'm fine. Yes. And we've got a little adventure for next time. A little bit of something different again. Very different. We like different. We lately, do. Don't we? we do. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have and you're not already, why not subscribe to the channel? If you subscribe, you get to know everything that's going on. Yeah, you do. When it happens. Yeah. Right? So click the thumbs up button as well and that helps us. Uh, and if you want YouTube to let you know when we release new videos, hit the notifications bell and YouTube will send you a little message to say, Oi! Foxes are on. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else then. <laughs> uh, if you want to help support the channel, uh, click the link that's up above Sean's head if you're watching on a phone or a tablet. It's in the video description if you're watching elsewhere. Uh, and you can join us as a YouTube member or uh, on Patreon and get all sorts of behind the scenes footage and exclusives yes. and polls. We did some polls, we did some didn't we? Polls, yes. Yeah, the Not least, pole dancing. Least said about that the best. Oh, that's an idea, isn't it? <laughs> if you took a selfie at the show yeah. of you and us or just of us or anything interesting stay till the end of the video and we're going to pop them all up and you might see yourself on film on film how exciting is that <laughs> right we're off to put some sun cream on three days too late yeah we'll see you next week bye bye Ta -da. Yeah.